So I'm going to turn off the green layer. I don't really want to work on top of the green. I want to work on top of the beige, my base. I'm going to create a new layer now, and I'm going to call this layer, I'm going to rename it by clicking the name button here. I'm going to call this spatter. Now in this layer, I'm going to use the standard brush. I'm going to customize it so it spits out color in little dots. And I'm going to spray a variety of different colors over the whole head. I want to do this in a very overstated, very bright fashion. And the reason for that is this is an underpainting. All this color we put down is going to be peeking through various layers of painting that's going to go on top. So the whole purpose of this is just to introduce some color variation in the final look of the character. So the stronger and the more overstated this color layer is that we're about to put down, the better, because you need it to be able to peek through the subsequent layers of paint that we're going to be putting down. So don't feel like you have to be subtle in this phase. In this phase, the, the more overstated you are, the better. So I'm going to use the standard brush, switch to the spray stroke, Make sure you turn color down to zero into the stroke modifiers, and that's so ZBrush doesn't try and modulate your color selection. I don't want it to, to do that. I want to select a color and have ZBrush put that color down. I don't want it to make any decisions for me. In the alpha menu, I will select alpha 7. And there we go. Now, if I were to change my color selection here, I'm going to go ahead and select, uh, let's say, a purplish color. Let's go to the system palette and let's select some kind of a uh, reddish purple there we go if I zoom into the eye areas here for example now using the standard brush with RGB turned on I'll just start to lay in some strokes here and you'll see the way it puts color down in this broken up spray pattern That's the spray brush, or that's the spatter brush that we've just created. I'm going to undo that last one. Now I'm just going to take this purple and I'm going to put it down on the lips. Dial down my draw size a little bit here. I'm going to put it down on the lip area, put it down on the nose. And I'm going to spray it into some of the recessed areas as well. I'm going to switch to a different color now. I'll go to the system palette and we'll select a red. I'm going to dial back the RGB intensity a little bit because I don't want to put down a bright, bright red here, but I don't want it to be too uh, desaturated. I'm going to spray red through the cheeks area, a little bit on the lips, and spray some up here into the forehead. You can see how this is really you know, really overstated. It's very spattery, very bright, and that's okay. That's what we're looking for at this stage. Bring some through here. Now I'm going to spray red into the ears, because the ears tend to be very warm. You can see a lot of blood in the ear area. And this is going to kind of depend on the, you know, the overall skin color that you want your character to have. You may not want this much redness in there, in which case you can dial it back, or if you want him to have more of a yellow or a bluish tinge, you can really reduce the amount of red that you put down. Let me turn up that RGB intensity a little bit there. Now I'm going to go to the system palette. I'm going to select a blue. I'm going to spray this blue down into the cheek and, and mouth areas, the beard line, as it were, because this does tend to be cooler areas of the face. Areas of the skin color tend to be cooler here. On a human, that's because, well, on a male, it's because you've got uh, 
the hair follicles there, and you've actually got some, some hair under the skin that's cooling it off. I'm going to spray some of this blue into the eye, re, uh, eye sockets. I like to put cool colors down into the recessed areas. Cool colors just by their nature tend to recede, so it really helps to... Um, I'm going to go to the stroke menu here, by the way, and I'm going to turn off lazy mouse. There's a lazy mouse set on the standard brush by default. I actually find it a little bit annoying right now as I'm trying to paint, so I just turned that off. And there we go. Now I'm getting a much better reaction from the brush. Uh, cool colors by their nature tend to recede, so if you can spray cool colors down in the recessed areas, it's going to help accentuate the fact that those appear to be deeper or going away from the viewer. Let's turn up the RGB intensity a bit on that. Just putting that blue down into those recessed areas. So you're really starting to see here, I'm really going all, kind of all out and putting down some really crazy color here. That's okay, that's what we're looking for at this stage. We're not looking for anything realistic. We're looking for an overall coverage of a lot of color modulation, a lot of color variation here. I'm going to go to the system palette and I'm going to select a yellow now. I'm going to bring the yellow in along the brow ridge. Let's undo that one. I want to actually dial back the intensity on that a little bit. Bring it through the brow or the uh, the, the nose, nose bridge there and a little bit along the jawline, and you'll notice how it optically mixes here. As I put the yellow down in the blue region, I start to get a green, because the yellow and the blue are mixing in the eye and giving you the perception of the color green. Because those dots laying close to each other are going to have that result. You're going to perceive the intermediate color, the mixed color, when you put dots of two, uh, two different colors next to each other. I'm going to overdo it with that yellow. All right. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and save my work now. So I'm going to exit out of the spat spatter layer now. Just turn it on to visibility mode instead of record mode. Because so I've got what I need there got a nice overall coverage of some pretty uh, elaborate or pretty you know broad color strokes now again I want to stress that this color is only there to peek through the subsequent layers this is not supposed to be the final color surface obviously you want to make sure that this is pretty bright and pretty uh, pretty overstated so it's going to be bright enough to be seen through the next few layers of paint that we put down this is going to just help add a sense of translucency to the skin by having this down there.